People believe that in order to be successful, they need to have one invention. One invention that they swing for the fences, it goes viral, people love it, and it sells a million dollars and they become successful. That was true, that was the model 10 years ago, but that is not the way to be successful today. Because 3D printing has created a completely new way of making stuff that makes that old model the same as trying to ship out a catalog to get people to your website. Today we're gonna to talk about how that's wrong and go through the businesses that are actually making millions of dollars using the correct 3D printing business model. So let's dive into the old way of doing stuff a little bit more. Now, in the olden days, an invention was a singular thing. It was really important and it was really valuable because it was very difficult to get created. If you wanted to invent a better mousetrap, you would already be kind of rich because that new mousetrap was gonna be really expensive to manufacture. You had to find suppliers, you had to find an engineer to design it for you, you had to get it shipped over from a different country where it was manufactured, you had to assemble all the parts and pieces, then you had to store it in a warehouse for forever. It's just radically expensive to bring a product to market. The old adage is hardware is hard. Yes, it is. It's stupidly hard because there's this whole mess of stuff that you have to deal with in order to make a physical object. So what came out of this is that each one of those physical objects was wildly special. People would agonize about them for weeks, months, years, making sure that it was perfect. Imagining that they were Steve Jobs and perfecting the perfect item that everyone would love when it appears. But the problem is, is that 90% of those businesses go out of business. The odds are very much not in your favor. And when creating a business, you are working as hard as you can to bring the odds kind of in your favor to at least coin flip. But when creating a physical product, it is worse than that. It is highly probable that it will fail. And you only get one shot at it because it's so expensive. So people spend a ton of time on it. Now, this whole idea has carried on into the world of 3D printing. In my day-to-day -day job, I see inventors and sellers and engineers all the time who have invented a thing and they're looking to have it manufactured with 3D printing because it's a more affordable way than traditional manufacturing. And that's true, but that's still the wrong business model because what they're going to do is they're gonna order 5,000 3D printed versions of that product and then still fail. That's still the wrong business model because it's left over from that old way of doing stuff. 3D printing has a fundamental superpower in that it does not require that you order 10,000 pieces of something. It has no minimum order quantities. You can order one, and then two, and then a couple in a day, and so on. So let's look at the business model that kind of a way. If nothing exists until somebody actually wants it, then the cost to create it is zero. You can sit inside of your room with a laptop and a software to create a 3D model and design a product and then just upload it. And now you are manufacturing that product. Here at Slant3D, we've built an app called Teleport where you can literally do that. You create a store, you connect it, and then you upload a 3D model. And whenever somebody orders your product, we print and ship it directly to your customer for you. So you do not have to build a factory. You do not have to order 10,000 pieces. You do not have to have a warehouse you simply have to create an invention. That creation of the invention, now it's free to manufacture because you don't have to make it until somebody actually buys it, which means you're profitable on the first one. And that's a huge deal. But now you have to change your business model because it's very likely that your first invention will not be successful and will not sell any at all. But what's great is that you were able to discover that for free. All you had to do was put in some work, design the product, and you found out nobody actually wanted it. You have just learned that nobody wanted your product for hundreds of thousands of dollars less than what people had to pay just 10 years ago. Congratulations. Now, how do you actually become successful? How do you start turning the odds more into your favor? Well, since the cost to create a new product is now zero, and it's just dependent on how hard you wanna work, that it's dependent on how hard you wanna work. This is what you do. You get that first product, and then you also probably create 10 more variations of it, and you A-B test the product. You'll find one will sell a little bit better than the others. You look at that one, you create 10 variations of it, 
and then you'll find one that sells pretty good there. You take 10 variations of it. Because again, the creation of a new product is free. So you design as fast as you can and you get as many versions of the product out there as you possibly can until you find the one that people like. And each time somebody buys it, you call them up and you say, why did you like it? Why do you hate it? And you fix the problems and create more versions of the good stuff. Not only the one that was kind of okay, but the next one that is really loved and the next one that is really loved. This is why 3D printing is so valuable. Rather than having to swing for the fences on a single pitch when you had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to create a product, now you can keep swinging until you get tired. And it's entirely dependent on when you get tired. Your work ethic, your ability to create new stuff is the only thing stopping you from being successful. So do not invent an item and hope that it sells well. Get used to inventing dozens to hundreds of items because this is what works. Right now, if you want examples of companies that are doing this, which are wildly successful, you can look at companies like Gantry. They make 3D printed lamps. On their site, they have several hundred lamps that are sconces and desk lamps and floor lamps, and they push and pull on different categories based on what is popular, and they adjust, and they create new designs all the time. You have guys like Out of Darts, who design accessories for Nerf guns, hundreds of accessories and spare parts and pieces that a few people want and some are really successful. And then those experiments and those needs and that customer base informs new products that he can create. Or you can look at Baker Street Cutters, which has thousands of SKUs of different cookie cutters so that people who are looking for something specific can find something, but then there are also items that are able to go viral and break away and sell thousands of dollars of merchandise. Or you can look at successful toy companies like Z Bailey Designs, who on Instagram design a couple new little fidget wiglets every week that create interesting content for people and again, find the items that people really love. Oh, people really like miniature wiglet cows rather than wiglet frogs. Let's make some more cows and mammals. Let's add a fox and a giraffe and this kind of thing rather than doing a frog and a lizard. Those aren't popular. Let's go over here. These companies are growing exceptionally quickly and doing exceptionally well because they're not married to an invention. They're married to a concept and are willing to fail fast and build as quickly as they're able to. And this is great because it's no longer a luck of the draw. Am I lucky enough that people will want my product? No, it's a question of how hard are you willing to work to improve your product and make it better over time. It's like improving software. When Google was getting started, they would change the color of the blue button on their search site to find out which one made people click more. And they tried thousands of variations because it was free to try the variations. It's now free to do that with physical objects. You can upload a thousand products tomorrow and it costs you nothing until somebody actually buys it. That's a business model. And now it's only on you to create as many products as you can so you can discover what the actual good product is. Have a great day, everybody.